Inception. It's a really good movie. I would even go as far to say that it was a classic. So I was watching Inception recently for uh, the work-related reasons, and while loads about this movie has pretty much already been said, one thing stood out to me that I've never heard anyone talk about. So hear me out, right? We all know what this movie's about. It's to get the dreams within dreams. It's a science fiction story about industrial espionage that blurs the lines between dreams and reality. It involves familial trauma, self-destructive indulgence in fantasy, and navigating complex systems at great risk to win a dangerous game. That's the story to us. That's the story of the main characters. Cobb, Ariadne, Eames, Arthur, Yusuf, Saito. But something caught my attention when I was watching the film. What about this guy? Robert Fisher is in a completely different movie. This dude has no idea what happened in the movie Inception. He doesn't care about Maul or if Cobb's really awake at the end, whether or not they're gonna make it out before Limbo. He doesn't even know about Limbo. If you told this movie from Fisher's perspective, he's on a spirit quest through the depths of his psyche. What's really fascinating to me about this movie is the weight of what is being done to this guy. A way to read the text of this story is the story of the spirit guides leading a man to salvation or inner peace. If you look at the movie through this lens, the intro sequence can be seen as a character study of the angel charged by God to save a man's soul. So we all know that Inception is like a, it's a metaphor for filmmaking and, and Fisher is the audience and Cobb is like the filmmaker and he's got to carry him along an emotional experience by constructing a story. But what's interesting to me is not just the one-to-one -one comparison of their filmmaking jobs and their inception job. It's the love and sensitivity required to perform it. Cobb puts emotional sensitivity first from the moment that he learns about the idea. He's offered a job by an extremely powerful man who in this reading we can look at as God. And his response isn't a yes, it's a How complex is the idea? Immediately, he's already taking the concept of industrial espionage and abstracting it into a pure human experience. This idea will define him. So the filmmaking metaphor is less of a haha, look at this. It's more of a byproduct of the fact that they're creating the circumstances for an epiphany. It's kind of like that part in The Good Place where they're creating circumstances for people to grow and change into better people. It doesn't sound so much like a thief, more like a guardian. When looking through the film this way, another character that stands out is Eames. Eames is the character who's like the most emotional about this. Not like he's personally invested, he clearly seems as though he isn't, but he immediately identifies it as an emotional task that needs to be done carefully and with sensitivity. What you have to do is start at the absolute basic. Which is what? The relationship with the father. Like, this is emotionally heavy. Another big scene in this reading of the film is the scene where they actually talk about it. When they're initially discussing the idea and how to perform Inception, they're all sitting around in a boardroom and, and talking about it in much a way that like a, you might do at a pre-production studio. Eames has a moment where he throws out an idea and it gets completely squashed down. Suggest to him breaking up his father's company as a screw you to the old man. Cobb's just like, no. But he takes it in stride and not into the slightest wilt of disappointment. Because he's taken it in stride and doesn't take personal offense to having his idea rejected, he immediately comes back with the solution that the rest of the movie will dig into. I will try this. Um, my father accepts that I want to create for myself, not follow in his footsteps. Not my work. These two thieves have a really healthy working relationship. If you're ever in a creative field, this is how you should go about it. But the important thing here is they say they need to go for positive emotion. We need Robert Fisher to have a positive emotional reaction to all this. Again, are these thieves or guides? All this to say, they're kind of trying to do something really good for this man. More and more, I look at this is the story of a bunch of spirits who are trying to redeem themselves in the eyes of God by doing something moral. So it's not so much tricking Robert Fisher, it's showing him the truth, making him realize something for himself. They're going to invade his mind and take the position of his spirit guides to show him a deep truth. See, Inception is not planting an idea in someone's mind. The first time Cobb performed Inception, it wasn't a lie. He was revealing a truth that she had locked away inside of her. She had locked something away, something deep inside her truth that she had once known but chose to forget. So the task of inspiring a man is not convincing him of something he never believed. But all of that stuff, it's, um, it's really at the mercy of your subject's prejudice, you see. And the way they go about it is actually really smart. The first move of this mystic guidance that they're offering Fisher is the idea that there is something that his father has been saving for him that no one else gets to see. A mystery. They pose the question to him, why would he give me the means to destroy my whole inheritance? They don't answer. They leave it in his mind to grow, and they take him deeper. So midway through his spirit quest, in a van with a hood over the mark, they discuss the next step of their plan. There's a really funny moment where Eames says, That boy's relationship with his father is even worse than we imagined. And Cobb's like, Good. <laughs> <laughs> the stronger the issues, the more powerful the catharsis. So now that they've learned this about him, they need to shift the resentment he has from his father upon his close friend. The person who, unbeknownst to him, is actually seeking to obtain the power of the company in his father's wake. The sicker Morris Fisher becomes, the more powerful Peter Browning becomes. The angels lay out the pieces so they can heal the relationship with his father and corrupt the relationship with the man who seeks power. Exposing his godfather's true nature. 
We should charge fish a lot more than science over this show. So in this one, he finds out that he's dreaming. And a cool switch happens. Instead of playing a part and working from the background, Cobb actually takes on the active role of being his angel. That is what he's pretending to be. I'm the head of your security down here. I am here to protect you. Which is a little misleading, but put a pin in that because I want to come back to it. There's also a really funny moment later where Fisher meets the rest of his team and then Cobb says, With me. Which is true, they're all here to help him. I love when a character tricks someone by telling them the truth. And so when Browning appears, but this time as a projection, not just Eames playing dress up, it's revealed to us what he actually thinks of Browning. The kidnappers are working for you. He already knew this guy was sus. When Eames was playing Browning, he was feeding him information that his projection now is feeding back to him. But Eames didn't plant this part. Fisher Morrow has been my entire life. I can't let you destroy it. Robert's subconscious has taken this information and deduced that Browning isn't on his side. So when Cobb says that he's there to protect him, this isn't really a lie. He's Fisher's angel. He's here to reveal a truth to him. So it's kind of poetic that the people that they're fighting in his dreams are his own projections. Literal manifestations of his own subconscious fighting back against what they're trying to show him. And he needs to recruit Fisher to join the team. Fisher has to fight against his own subconscious so he can learn the truth. I need you to work with me, Mr. Fisher. And the person who ends up breaking into the deepest level of his subconscious is Fisher himself. This is what they meant when they talked about the problems with Inception. The subject's mind can always trace the genesis of the idea. True inspiration's impossible to fake. It's not true. Fisher's spirit guides know from the very beginning that it needs to be him and him alone who actually uncovers the truth. In order to find out the truth about about your father, you're gonna need to break into Browning's mind on your own. Wait a second. I told you I can only show you the door. You have to walk through it. You're doing a Morpheus. What the extractors are doing is laying out a path for Fisher to walk, setting up the pieces very carefully and precisely so that Fisher will find his inner truth. And because of that fact, they don't actually know what he's gonna find in there. It's a shame. I really want to know what's gonna happen in that. They can hope, but they have no idea what's actually in his heart. So this is one part where Fisher actually goes to limbo and then all this stuff happens, but it's all totally beyond his control or understanding. In the context of his spiritual journey, he probably saw it as some weird dream logic event. In spiritual journey stories like this, there's always a point where the main character falls off the path. He wanders into dangerous territory in the mystic land. But luckily, our angels bring him back in time for him to enter his own subconscious. And they played it smart. They made it into a hospital so that he would put his father there. Making the bottom level a hospital so Fisher will bring his father. We see the memory that he has of his father dying, telling him how disappointed he is. But in this moment, when we see how he actually feels about it in his heart, we see what he wanted to hear, that he was disappointed that he tried to be him. This picture in his wallet, it means so much to Robert that it's landed on his father's bedside in real life, in Fisher's wallet through two levels of subconsciousness, and in the most secure place in the deepest accessible part of his soul, the one good memory, a toy something that he made. Fisher doesn't need to act like his father. He could destroy it all, create something new, let go of the pain and the toxicity, let it all wash away on that second kick. Fisher at the end says, You know, the will means that dad wanted me to be my own man. That's what I'm gonna do, Uncle Peter. So Fisher has this massive catharsis, a genuine catharsis, a real life-changing moment. And he makes a decision about this catharsis when he thinks he's woken up. He will find the hidden will that does not exist. He will defy his treacherous uncle. He will dissolve the empire, accept his father's strange love, and be his own man. He decides this for himself on the first layer of his subconscious on his own accord. But then he wakes up. So to Fisher's mind, what happened is he had a dream where he was heavily resolved in a decision. And he wakes up reflecting on that. Why did I choose that? Why did I decide to do that? Maybe I should do that. That's true inspiration. You see what I mean by this kind of being like therapy? See, the goal of Inception from the main characters is to give an abstract feeling to their mark. How do you quantify that? How do you show that the goal is accomplished? <laughs> In a regular heist movie, you, you show the gold that they get. You show them partying on a boat afterwards or whatever. But how do you visually show to the audience that a main character has been inspired? <laughs> like, what does that even look like? Well, I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like Killian Murphy's performance. See, Killian has a lot on his shoulders in this movie. His emotional journey has to track. We have to buy it in order for this movie to work. The character, you know, has this kind of um, emotional catharsis in the middle of the film, which was very important for the story and very important for me. We have to believe that the main characters have achieved their goal, which is to inspire him. So if there's two scenes that Killian Murphy had to get right, it was the hospital scene and the plane scene. If you don't buy this character arc, you won't buy the movie at all. And so we get to the scene where Fisher hears what he wishes his father's last words were. Like, holy cow, you can just see it in his eyes. It's everything he's ever wanted to hear. He becomes a little boy again. He needed to communicate this emotional information and he stuck the landing so hard. And, you know, also took we took our time with it. 
because it needed to have that emotional wallop to it for everything else to make sense. And after that moment, that moment where everything changes, he gets to properly grieve for his father, something he probably didn't feel he was able to do due to his mixed emotions before. And did you ever notice that we never actually find out what happened to the Fisher conglomerate? The crazy thing about this performance is he sells it. We don't need to know. We see it in his face. So in this movie full of lies, distorted reality, schemes, and ulterior motives, and psychotic breaks, Robert Fisher has such a hilariously earnest experience of self-discovery. It's my favorite part of the story, and it was the secret ingredient that made this movie work. And just coming from a guy who has a really complicated relationship with his father, this is real. So that was the very last detail of Inception. That was the one thing you missed. Hey, if you like the music in this video, then you might like the song that I just released. It's called Familiarity. It's on all the streaming platforms. It would genuinely mean so much to me if you checked it out. Thank you to my brother for helping me write and edit this. And if you want to support me in any way, I've got a Patreon page up. I love making these, but I can't do it very often, so thanks to James for letting me do it. We got videos on this channel every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Leave a comment if you think I'm wrong or stupid, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe, everybody.